Fashion Tech Alliance involves higher educational institutions, small, medium and big enterprises and the research center. This project has been co-founded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union and is aimed to facilitate knowledge exchange between partners and to design and pilot learning experiences to engage students in a Fashion Tech Residency program embedding young talents in the company's innovation activities. A central objective of the project is to design multidisciplinary and intersectoral learning activities involving international students from five European universities. The contents of the lectures have been specifically created to match the needs of fashion tech learning. They have become open educational resources to allow future engagement between a European-wide fashion and textile HEI community and are available under Creative Commons Sharealike 4.0 with the aim of a wide and free distribution, access, use and reuse. Ready to learn more about fashion tech? Enjoy the lecture! This is Daria Casciani. I am a PhD and an assistant professor at Politecnico di Milano. This lecture will be about ethnographic methodological research. This lecture will focus on ethnography, providing an historical overview and definition from its beginning in the anthropological and social discipline. The lecture will describe the main principles, the features and opportunities of ethnography, referring to the practices and the processes associated to ethnographic research. In addition, it will give you information about the main tool and strategies that are used to conduct ethnographic researches, such as observational studies, interviews and participants provided contents. In addition, the lecture will highlight the main type of ethnography research methodologies which can be applied to design and architecture, such as focused or rapid ethnography, and also happening in the digital realm, such as digital ethnography, virtual ethnography and ethnography. The term etymology goes back to ancient Greek from ethnos, which means foreign people, and graphe, which means writing. So literally, ethnography means the description of foreign people, so foreign society. This presupposes two things. First of all, that people who are engaged in the ethnography must be mobile to have come into contact with foreign society to begin with the research. Secondly, they require media such as writing, drawing and images to record their observations or research. So ethnography is the study and systematic recording of human cultures and the descriptive work produced from such research. The ethnography methodology origin lies in the late 19th century when uh, academics ventured out into the colonies to study the culture, the human behaviors and their social relations. The standpoint of ethnography is the fact that the researcher are supposed to see things from the points of view of their subjects of the study. It presupposes lack of familiarity between the ethnographer and the people and life worlds they investigate. Ethnography is not an academic discipline, but a research methodology situated in various disciplines and used in various social sciences, such as cultural sociology, social and cultural anthropology, organizational science, business administration, and of course, design. Ethnography has been adapted in each of these disciplines to fulfill different scopes. It is applied experiential, explorative research methodology in which the physical presence and sensory experience of the researcher play a part as they move corporally but also digitally through other realities. Being a qualitative research methodologies, there are three methodological principles that are used to provide the rationale for the specific features of the ethnographic methods. They are also uh, basically the um, foundation of, for much of the criticism of quantitative research that fails to capture the true nature of human social behaviors. 
The three principles can be summarized under the headings of naturalism, understanding and discovery. Let's have a look on that. Naturalism. Social research aims to capture the character of naturally occurring human behaviors, and that can be only achieved by first hand contact with it, not by secondary data and interferences from what people do in artificial settings, like, for example, experiments or uh, what, uh, from what they say in interviews. And so this is the reason that ethnographers carry out their research in natural settings. There are settings that exist independently of the research process, rather than in those set up that are specifically made for the purposes of research. So people are studied in their everyday life, uh, rather than under conditions created by the researcher. Research so text takes place in the field. Another important implication of naturalism is that the study of natural setting uh, by the researcher should seek to minimize the researcher effect on the behavior of the people that are studied. So this aims to increase the chances that the discoveries uh, available in the setting will be generalizable to other similar settings that have not been researched. Understanding. To be able to explain human actions effectively, researcher must gain an understanding of the cultural perspectives on which they are based. And this is necessary when studying a society that is foreign to our knowledge and also when we are studying more familiar settings. In both the situation, a researcher cannot assume that they already know the perspectives of the people that are studied, even in our own society, because particular groups and individuals develop distinctive worldviews. So ethnic, occupational and small informal groups develop distinctive ways of orienting in the world that may need to be understood if their behavior is to be explained. So the researcher need to learn the culture of the group that is studied and before they have to produce valid explanation for the behaviors of these uh, participants. Discovery. The research process of ethnographic research is inductive or discovery based. It means that the research is not guided or limited to the testing of explicit hypotheses. Why? It is argued that if a researcher approaches a phenomenon with a set of predefined hypotheses, the researcher may fail to discover the true nature of that phenomenon because it's blinded by the assumption that he had uh, and by his her own hypothesis. So, uh, in the ethnographic research, researchers have a general interest in some types of social phenomenon and in some theoretical issue or practical problem. The focus of the research is narrowed and sharpened and perhaps even changed substantially as the research proceeds. But let's move on the overview of the practices and processes which are associated to the fact of doing ethnographic research. We will highlight a range of ethical, methodological and practical factors and in particularly we will go through five sets of interrelated activities that are the basis of the ethnographic research. They are planning, sampling, data collection, data analysis and writing up. So imagine you have to start an ethnographic research. You have to start with planning activities 
which has to deal with access and ethics. The ethnographer, so you, will organize the activities to be performed and first of all, to gain credibility with the initial gatekeepers to a particular community that you want to study. And of course, you need to begin to build a rapport with all the study participants. Often, the access to a particular community is not like a one uh, activity, but needs to be renegotiated with different individuals of the community which is studied. Ethnographic research, like all social research, needs to be undertaken in an ethical way. This means that you have to care and have attention to safeguarding the interest of research participants. So you have to provide formal ethical approval and this uh, can be obtained from the local research ethics committee which covers the institution in which the study is due to be undertaken. The ethnographer, of course, needs to ensure undertaking informed consent before data collection activity starts, ensuring both anonymity of participants and confidentiality and privacy of all data gathered. Once this stuff is organized, then the ethnographer is focused on sampling. And sampling of the research setting is an important component of data collection because frames the overall methodology of your research. In general, the central issue of sampling is to understand the trade-off between the number of cases, so the settings, the individuals that you want to observe or interview, the action and activities that you are focused on, that you're going to select, that make the breadth of the study and the time that ethnographer needs to uh, undertake for the, for the activities of their research. Participants' activities and interaction are either sampled on an opportunistic and purposeful basis. So there's always a trade-off between the number of activities selected for the research and the time and resources that the ethnographer needs to generate a detailed tick description about the phenomenon under investigation. Crucial to the ethnographic research is the data collection. There are a number of possible data sources that can be collected during the field work. Data collection is most often affiliated with a heavy use of resources. Generally, they are interrelated and multiple, and so is an important aspect of research to plan and execute. There are a range of different complementary methods which can be used in ethnographic research that we will see later on. The next aspect is analyzing the data that were recorded by the ethnographer. The data analysis in the ethnographic methodology is iterative and unstructured. There are three aspects of data analysis, the description, the analysis and the interpretation. The description, also named as thick descriptions, refer to the recounting and description of data that uh, are treated as facts. Analysis refers to the process of examining the relationships the factors and linkages across the data that were collected. And finally, the interpretation of data builds an understanding or explanation of the data beyond the data analysis. Once you are in this point, sometimes you can need uh, further data collection and other devices to collect data during the activities. Then the final step is the writing. The writing of an ethnography has traditionally been seen as a distinct and separate activity from the field work and from the analysis. Writing a thick description of their experiences and interaction is something as important as the field work itself. 
The rhetoric of ethnography refers to its ecstatics and style. And it's very important as it is produced as a text, but sometimes also visually, as we will see later on in the lecture, that the character of ethnographies follow a textual gender. gender. So it's very important to take the time to write a paper, a report or a book about the activities done in the ethnographic research as a final step of this methodology. Data collection deals with research design. In this section, we will examine the main strategies, methods, techniques and tools used to record data during an ethnographic research study. Data collection is the core of the research design and covers the description of how the field research phase will be conducted by the researcher. It aims to answer to the questions such as what do we need to know and why we need to know it, what kind of data will allow the researcher to answer the questions, and where should the researcher go to answer the questions. The main strategies used to collect data are observation, interviews, user-generated data, where participants are asked to produce different things such as photos, drawings, diaries, in which they indicate specific information, and then the field notes of the researcher. Let's start from observation. So ethnographic observation is about watching people behave in their natural settings. Spradley distinguishes between nine dimensions of observation, which means what should be observed by the ethnographer. In particular, he lists the space as the physical place, the actors, which are the people involved, the activity, so the set of various actions, the objects, so the physical things, the acts, which are individual acts carried out by the people, events, which are a set of activities carried out by the people, the time, so the chronological sequence, the goals, so the aims people wish to accomplish, and the feelings, which means the emotion that are expressed during the observation. Spradley is interested in the interaction between these nine dimension, which he represents in his descriptive question matrix along the diagonal line of the matrix, where the same two categories meet, is where the detailed description of that category take place, and these are called the grand tour questions of the research study. Here in this uh, map, you can see uh, which are the questions that you can ask yourself while observing the nine elements that Spradley was naming as very important during the observation of ethnographic research. During the observation, the role of the ethnographer is between two opposite. Could be a real involved um, researcher into the activities, which is a complete participant involved in the activities of the um, observed people or complete detachment, which means that the observer is not participating in the activities, but it's just observing uh, externally. Of course, there is a spectrum of the possibilities that the researcher has to be more a participant and observer, but also more observer as participant. Direct observation is a method of research where the researcher watches and records the activities of individuals engaged in their daily activities. The observer does not actively engage the subjects of the study, either in conversation or in interviews, but strives to be unobtrusive and detached from the setting. The data collected through this kind of observation could be field notes, checklists, rating scales, documents, photographs and videos. Direct observation is an, an initial is good to 
uh, develop initial approaches to understanding a setting, a group of individuals or forms of behavior prior to interacting with the participants or developing, for example, interview protocols. As a research method, direct observation is more appropriate in open public settings where everyone has a right to be and congregate because conducting direct observation in private or closed settings without, for example, the knowledge or consent of members is more likely to raise ethical concerns. The observations may be unstructured or structured. Unstructured observation involves the researcher observing people and events and recording observation as field notes. The observation are recorded holistically without the aid of a predetermined guide or protocol. On the other side, structured observation is a technique where the ethnographer observes people and events using a guide or a set of protocol that has been developed ahead of time. Participant observation is a field research method whereby the researcher develops an understanding of the group taking part in the everyday routines and rituals alongside the participants of the study. It has been originally developed in the early 20th century by anthropologists researching native society in developing countries. It is now the principal research methods used by ethnographers who focus on recording the details of social life occurring in a setting. The ethnographer, who often lives among the members for months or even years, attempts to build trusting relationships. So the researcher becomes part of the social setting and as he or she gains the confidence and trust of the members, many participants will speak and behave in a more natural manner in the presence of the ethnographer. There are a number of advantages and disadvantages in working just with observational research. The advantages are that Observational research provides contextual data on settings, interaction, and individuals. It is a very useful tool for generating hypotheses for further study, so for example, to develop interviews protocols. It is a source of data on events and phenomena that do not involve verbal interactions. So for example, if you are uh, studying a phenomena such as mother-child nonverbal interaction and contacts and physical settings where interaction occurs. In this uh, observational research, the researcher develops a rich, deep understanding of a setting and of the member within the setting. Disadvantages of observational studies are that behaviors observed during direct observation can be unusual and atypical. Significant interaction, interactions or events may take place when the researcher is not present. Certain topics do not necessarily lend themselves to observation. So for example, it's very difficult to observe emotions, affections and attitudes. And the reliability of observations can be problematic, especially when multiple observers are involved. Moreover, it takes a longer and larger amount of time and resources for the researcher to develop observational studies. As already said, the practice of participant observation with its emphasis on developing relationship with the members of the community that is under study often leads to both informal conversational interviews and, or more formal in-depth interviews. Interview and conversations are used also when situations are not conclusive on the basis of observations. They are aimed to clarify observation and to understand deeper a phenomenon that has been observed within direct or participant observation. Question-answer situation 
are based on the assumption that there is a disparity in knowledge between the researcher and the participant. Furthermore, the social science interviews are artificial situations that do not exist in everyday communication. In the context of ethnographic interview, it is very important to ask open rather than closed questions. These questions are the ones that are able to open up new horizons and not simply be answered with a simple yes or no. The interviews are a sort of drama that is shaped by the interviewer, so by the ethnographer. And the framework and objectives of the interviews should be made very transparent to the interviewee through a preliminary briefing. More than this, a pleasant atmosphere should be created during the interview. The interviewee should be given the space to show several aspects of themselves and uh, stop answering a question if he's embarrassed by something. So to be very open and um, pleased to answer the questions he wants. The drama must be followed to develop and this is facilitated by posing brief and easily understandable questions about the life world of the interviewee. The conversation should not be theoretical or abstract, but they should focus on the life world of the interviewee. So it is important that the interviewee asks follow-up questions if something is unclear in the answers of the interviewee to explain the situation with more precision. Video recording generally is discouraged because it is negatively impacting the atmosphere of the conversation. Generally, if you use videos, then uh, the interviewee will give you details when the camera is off. But of course, it's impossible to take notes, meanwhile conducting a conversation at the same time. So interviews should be documented, for example, through audio recordings. Interviews and uh, conversation can be differentiated in three different ways. There are the informal conversational interviews that are frequently occurring during participants' observation or follows direct observation. In this kind of interviews, the researcher begins by conversing with a member of the group of interest that is under observation, and the conversation unfolds mostly freely. Uh, the researcher formulates the questions that are spontaneously, spontaneously uh, arising from the activities being observed, and then they uh, converse informally these are giving the researcher the maximum flexibility to pursue topics and idea as they emerge during the observation. The advantages, of course, are related to the fact that the researcher achieves more detailed and deeper topics that are considering and responding to the individual differences. And these are uh, very important because they are and not constrained by predetermined set of questions, so they are really free and emerging from the, the situation that has been observed. The disadvantages of informal interviewing is that they may generate less systematic data, which are more difficult to classify, to analyze, and to compare if different interviewee are uh, under investigation in the same community. The same is structured interviews. The ethnographer prepares an interview, which is uh, defined as a sort of uh, list of predetermined questions or probe, and it is called also interview guide. So the interviewee is going to respond to similar series of questions and topics. The questions are generally, of course, open-ended to elicit much detail as possible, and the researcher is free to pursue and probe other topics as they emerge during the interview. So it's not just obliged to follow the list of the interview guide, but can be um, integrated with 
specific extra questions that uh, can be uh, arising during the conversation. So in this case, the researcher is able to rephrase or explain questions to the interviewee to ensure that everyone understands the questions the same way and um, also achieve a sort of responsiveness to individual differences because it is, um, of course, the interviewee is allowed to express his or her own uh, view of the world in their own worlds. The disadvantages are still uh, the, the flexibility res is reduced and um, they might be difficult to be comparable if different um, participants are uh, interrogated under the same study. The structure interviews are more similar to surveys because the questions are specifically scripted and written prior to the interview, which serves to minimize variability in question wording and the ways questions are asked to different interviewees. So the research asks a uniform series of questions in the same order to each interviewee. And the questions are, of course, open-ended, and um, they are aimed to define more details and individual differences across different interviewees. They are particularly appropriate for qualitative studies involving multiple interviewers. Because, of course, it reduces the interviewer effect with several interviewees because there is no personal interpretation of the ethnographer and there is a standardization that helps uh, and facilitate the processing and analyzing of data. The disadvantages, of course, are related to the fact that less flexibility is allowed to the interviewee in the activities of conversation. There are many other ways of conducting interviews. We will focus on ethnographic interviews where the interview is conducted in the environment of the community that it's under study to appreciate how they perform tasks and view aspects of the tasks. This type of interview is characterized by the idea that the researcher must first learn from their informants what the right questions should be posed. And uh, the ethnographic interviews begin as an open interviews and become increasingly more closed. In this way, hypotheses are developed meanwhile the interview is conducted through an abductive process. And of course, it's like more, uh, it's like more a friendly conversation that uh, slowly introduce new elements to assist informants to respond as informants. Participants generated contents may be um, transferred to the researcher through the, the diary studies. In this particular uh, case, the researcher asks participants to document their activities and interaction over a defined period of time. This empowers the user and the participants to deliver content-rich information. Um, although this uh, diary status may be subjective, since, of course, participants will inevitably be influenced by the in-the-moment human issues and their emotions, they are really helpful to, to access generally authentic and very rich context-based information. There are many ways and great many tools and resources that a researcher can use to develop the ethnographic records, starting with the field notes that could be textual and audiovisual. Brief textual notation are generally the keywords or condensed accounts that the researcher takes notes in his notebook. These condensed accounts should be then followed by expanded accounts immediately after the fieldwork and by a sort of fieldwork journal 
in which not only the observation but also the feelings and the association and the impressions that preliminary came to the mind of the researcher are articulated. In addition to the textual notation, we can use, of course, audiovisual notations, which are part of the making of and taking information from the context. So filming and taking picture in an obtrusive way. And this part needs, of course, post-processing and editing techniques to define the style of the recorded data. Along with this, there are also the possibility to sketch and to draw illustration, meanwhile, uh, observations and interviews, of course, by making use of graphic anthropology. These tools are very, very familiar to the designer, and we will see them again in um, specific design ethnography methodologies that we will discover later on in the lecture. However, whatever tool and resources the researcher should decide to use, it is important to remember that it's important the assembling of the re ethnographic records. So to document a concrete sequence of interactional work in a detailed way, it is important to combine all the specific uh, methods and tools together to define thick descriptions of the reality that has been studied. There are many ways in which ethnography could be uh, done and uh, along of the history of ethnographic uh, research methodologies activities, many different kind of ethnographic methodology were popping up. A fundamental distinction that we can uh, include in this lecture may be drawn between the classical and focused ethnography. So classical ethnography in the tradition of the Chicago School is characterized by long-term immersion in the field, openness and description of impressions and experiences. It is um, an approach that was uh, defined by in-depth and holistic empirical description based on the positivist notion of detached researcher, so direct observation, attempting to objectively describe the ethnographic experiences. At the moment, this approach to ethnography is widely rejected toward a more participatory way of integrating the researcher into the activities of research. On the other side, the rapid and focused ethnography are practiced in, for example, applied fields such as architecture, business, marketing and design. They require uh, less time to be undertaken, are always based on field work and field study, but ethnographers conduct their research in a shorter and well-defined timeline. The ethnographers enter the field with a more well-defined and narrowed research question so that the study case is shortened and more defined in time and in scopes. Beside this, um, from the physical settings that are used in the field works of ethnographer, recently ethnography extended in the digital realm. So digital ethnography happens in the digital realm through what is called virtual ethnography and ethnography. Digital ethnography tackles this digital dimension where the activities such as social interactions and cultural space are also happening in the digital realm and it is important to consider them in the studies. Participants observational research which is based in online field work. It is using computer mediated communication as a source of data that arrives to an ethnographic understanding and representation of a cultural and communal phenomenon. 
Netnography, in fact, collects data related to the study using various online tools. It studies and so observes the online social behaviors of individuals. It allows the researcher to collect rough data by directly observing free online content such as video, photos, posts, and related conversation also on social media, networks, forums, and so on. By capturing such information and analyzing it in a structured way, ethnography allows us to describe and model the online behaviors of a particular community of participants. Ethnography is considered a good method that allows to access big data. And this is very important because uh, it transfer all the information that are released online to inform um, the social relations happening in the digital uh, life world. Virtual ethnography also implies the observation of online social situation and community cultures, but goes beyond and further by taking a more interactive and collaborative approach to the study of individual social behaviors. This means that the researcher interacts directly by means of digital technology, so is uh, included into the activities on the forum discussions and uh, images to generate comments and response to these activities to produce new contents that are elicited by the researcher. So to conclude this lecture, we will remind that ethnography is the study and systematic recording of human cultures and the descriptive work produced from such research. The practice and processes of ethnography are planning, sampling, data collecting and analyzing, and finally writing and reporting. Data collection is the core of the design research and is based on observational studies, interviews and conversation. Sometimes these two kind of tools are mixed and also participants provided contents.